I'm your host today, Van the Man. Got a special treat for you. We're going to be teaching you how to airbrush a t-shirt. Handmade, artist, creative, American-made stuff. We're going to be doing this cute little anime girl. Look how cute she is. Anyways, we're going to be giving you a step-by-step -step guide how to do it, the best way to sort of make it easier for yourself. At the end of this, we're actually going to be selling this awesome t-shirt that's going to be completely finished, handmade, done by my boy Nick here. We'll give you the opportunity to buy it. Now remember to smag that like button. I got the Wada Eclipse HPCS. This right here is about $180. This is what I airbrush with every single day. What I got it hooked up to is a Zinni air compressor. It's not very loud or anything like that. That is about $100 on Amazon, I believe. A few replacement parts over here that I have. The paint needle, which I want to say is around $15 on Amazon. They're very fragile. This little air nozzle right here, just about, I want to say $12 to $15 again on Amazon. So the replacement parts, not the cheapest. Try to keep your stuff very clean, very orderly. What I do to keep everything from clogging up is after I get done painting, I will soak it in some water just to make sure it's not drying out or anything like that. Other stuff that I have, Medea airbrush cleaner. I want to say this is around twenty to thirty dollars on Amazon. Uh, that's just because I got like a really big bottle of it though. I use it a lot. I mix this with water in a little squirt bottle like this, and then whenever I'm done painting or I want to switch colors, I'll squirt it into my little uh, paint bucket there. Wipe it out, clean it out, get it ready for the next color, or get it ready for storage so I can put it up and everything like that. Got another one of those little bottles that has a reducer in it. So my reducer is Createx Colors forty twelve reducer it's water-based just to make my paint last longer it's no point in just using like a full bottle of paint to paint something whenever you can put reducer in there and stretch it out thin it out it also makes it come out of the airbrush a little bit easier because i am using an awada that has like a 0.25 millimeter needle on there so it's a very very small hole that the paint has to go through so it makes it a lot easier whenever you put some thinner in with your paint so for paint i use a lot of transparent createx colors paint i haven't really used too many other brands just because i'm like this works doesn't really mess up or do anything like that it stays very well after I heat press everything. I use opaque white and opaque black paints because to me they just work a little bit better. So this, off the top of my head, I wanna say it was around $25, $30 on Amazon. I'll take my airbrush and whenever I'm not using it, very conveniently fits in here so that it doesn't spill over, doesn't leak any paint out. And then whenever I'm done with my paint, if I have a little bit left in the paint bucket, I spray the rest of it out so I'm not just like leaking paint all over the room, all over the table or anything crazy. Oh, and then my heat compressor. Uh, it's a Vivo Home. A lot of these you set it for 325 degrees Fahrenheit and then 20 to 25 seconds. So it literally just clamps down on my shirts after I'm done uh, spray painting. It'll set the colors in there so you can throw it in the washing machine, wash it. It won't fade, won't do anything like that. Making high quality stuff, you just want to make sure that it's going to stay and stay looking nice. So I use these TB1 garment and leather drawing pens, high temperature invisible. If I'm drawing something on the shirt, say I mess up a little bit, I want to get rid of it and I can just like heat up the iron, put the iron on there and erase the marks that I don't want to be on there and then start over. So these are just random Gildan shirts that I had. I didn't want to just throw it away, trash it because I don't like to waste things. I just leave it hanging up on my easel right here and then whenever my paint gets clogged or anything like that, I'll pick it off with my fingernail and if that doesn't really get a lot of it off I'll just hold it right here and spray a good little portion of paint on there just to get it all out and clean and clear the paint will come through nice and smooth so basically what I'm doing is finding all the dark lines over here and outlining that so that I know where the shape of her hair is going to be and then I can go in and paint after I'm done if you could freehand that by all means get your paint out go ahead and freehand it's actually a very tedious process. If I didn't have to do it, I for sure would not actually. Right. That's what you want right there. Should be kind of fine. And you can see that now we have the projector off. We have the sketch is done. It's basically, you get a piece of marble, right? And you're like Michelangelo and you want to make an anime girl. Every little, every little strike of the hammer is getting closer to the final product, bringing that anime girl into reality. So we're just keeping blue tape in the spots where the paint is not gonna go. So each, every other line, this is my carpentry skills coming in. She's all taped up, she's primed. So now that we've done step one, gather all your materials. Step two, trace and tape your design. We're ready to move on to step three, which is the money maker, actually airbrushing. I'll take the paint, take the airbrush. Since I know I'm doing a lot of red, I'm just gonna go ahead and put a lot of drops in there. So you can see it's kind of getting clogged. 
this one I'm actually really proud of. So if that says anything also, <laughs> <Yeah>. that's like, <laughs> you know what I mean? So no, I'm definitely by no means like a well-renowned artist or anything crazy right. like that. This is possible. Anyone can do this with a little bit of creativity. Anyone can do this. And a nice projector. Yeah, so. yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Light blue out. Reducer. Cause you see like gravity bottles where I fucked them up. So now we're gonna do the bra. I'm gonna leave those little white dots there. It's gonna look nice. Right. So the way I do it, I will basically do my best to trace around those dots before I even add on any of the other painting right that way i know like hey these dots are here don't paint over them we are about to outline her body in black color in her eyes and we'll do her hair and after we're done with the hair do her body do like a little bit of shading with her body make sure she looks good make sure she looks right and then we'll be done I think she kind of like she got a little bit of buck teeth. It's kind of hot to watch it. <laughs> so I'll start with the skin tone. And after we're done with the skin tone all over, I'm gonna switch it from that peach color paint back to red. We'll finish our bikini. And then instead of wasting the red paint, I'll put like a little bit of white in there to lighten it up. It's like a pink color. And then we'll do her tongue and her little cheek on the inside of her mouth right there. And after that, we'll be fucking done. Nice. Be fucking done. My waifu. White line that kind of... Boom. Yeah. We'll call that fucking done. That is done. Bow. Yes. Yeah. Oof. How long? Um, I definitely want to say like five to six hours, like three hours today. today we came yeah. over at like five, I believe. Yeah. Or it might have been four. So it might be like four and a half hours today. Three hours last time. A seven hours, seven, seven and a half hour hours. Seven hour job right there. Yeah. You guys. Gotta make it look cute. That's one of your best pieces. Oh yeah, I yeah. believe so. I think so. It's definitely my most detailed piece. Uh -huh. Yeah, man. For sure, for sure. Just kind of keep doing these little circle motions too. Mm -hmm. 